Hi, this is Jason from Horrific Nightmares, and today I wanted to do a review for the movie Nuns, an Italian horror story. But before I get into my review, I wanted to take the time to thank Bayview for sending me this copy to review for you guys. They have an amazing company. I'm going to put the links to their YouTube channel, their official website, and their Facebook link in the description box below. Definitely check them out. They have an amazing catalog full of all different types of things. They have fitness, they have drama, comedy, you name it, they probably print it. So, all right, Nuns, an Italian horror story, is a 2020 film which runs approximately 101 minutes and is written and directed by Giovanni Velocio. The only thing I could find on him was a bunch of shorts. This stars Mattia Galantino as Bruno. Nothing to his credit. Agata Paradiso as Helena. She had done one short and an episode of a show called An Italian Horror Story, which the director also did one episode as well. I think maybe they turned the short episode into a film or, you know, Something like that. And finally, Katerina Orlando as Sister Virginia. Uh, this movie is amazing. Now, I am a big fan of Italian cinema, especially Italian zombie films, Italian giallos, or gialli, that's plural. And I really wanted to see this film. It looked right up my, right up my alley. What you have is, it's a story about a convent with a church and a guest house that was turned into a motel. The convent is still supposedly there, although it's been damaged, and the church is still there, although it's not used because a bunch of bad things happened years ago. Now you have three sisters in the beginning who are performing a ritual where they're going to kill a newborn child for reasons that you find out later on in the film. A boy who's breaking into the church finds him in the basement, and he is quickly dispatched. After that, you get introduced to the guest house. They call it a guest house. It's really like a motel. Um, you get introduced to Bruno who is the caretaker of the guest house. Now, Bruno is very quiet. He performs all the tasks of the guest house, which is also part of the comet in the church, which I thought was kind of weird, but for some reason it works. Um, the film drips with atmosphere. So he's getting more clients in as far as people staying there tonight, and he needs extra help. They decide to hire Helena. Helena is deaf, and she's going to be the the um, cleaning lady or like the maid of the hotel. Like I said, she is deaf. She cannot speak, and her and Bruno start to fall in love. Meanwhile, people keep checking into this guest house or hotel. Yeah, keep needing to... Um, emphasize that because it's more like a maybe a hostel or something where a bunch of rooms are for rent and it's kind of a big place so yeah it's kind of the flavor it gives so people keep checking into the hotel or guest house and they're getting picked off one by one by a nun wearing a black veil over her face. That's as far as I'm going to get into the plot. Um, it does have a huge twist at the end, and I love this movie. I think it's great. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the film. Uh, this person, it's, a, it's an Italian film made in Italy. It is subtitles, of course, because it's a foreign, foreign film. And this director, 
it's hard for me to believe that this is his first film. That's how good it is. It pays homage to all the movies that have come before, all the great directors. It has um, aspects of Gialli in it. It has the non-sploitation films that were done in the 70s. It has the color palette that you've come to expect from directors like Argento. And it's done... It, it's basically a modern Italian film. Now, as I'm watching the film, I'm thinking to myself, the plot's kind of all over the place. The story is kind of all over the place, because that's where it was going through my mind. But as the story develops, it brings it all home in a, in a way that's... I mean, let's not kid ourselves. If you watch any kind of giallo, there's a big explanation at the very end. And if you're not paying attention, sometimes it can go over your head. But it explains everything that happened in the film. All the messy things that I thought were just um, story flaws or typical Italian film. I mean, look at a, a movie like um, Fulci's Enigma. The film is kind of messy. I like it, but it's kind of messy. And it seems like in a lot of Italian cinema, they put things in just for shock value. It may not, it may or may not have a lot to do with the plot, but they put it in anyway. <laughs> so it even has all of that in this film. But they do wrap it up quite nicely. And I was extremely impressed with this film. Now, I know that I have uh, friends and people who subscribe to me who are really into Italian cinema as well. Not only Gialli, but um, zombie films and just Italian cinema in general. You're going to want to watch this film because it's, it's incredible. As far as people who aren't into Italian cinema, if you don't like foreign film, this may not be for you. If you don't like to read subtitles, me, it doesn't bother me a bit. I would rather it be in Italian than English with bad dubbing. Give this movie a try. It is fantastic. Definitely blew me away and exceeded my expectations. Another special thank you to Bayview for sending me this. And if you like what you see in here, hit that like button and subscribe. And until next time, peace.